So, welcome to Shop Talks. It's a production of The Ink Kitchen, which is an online resource of information on decorating that I'm part of, and Impressions, who puts the show on. And we have sponsors, in particular, Shop Talks are sponsored by Haynes and Her Solutions. Her Solutions, a couple rows over. One of our big sponsors of The Ink Kitchen in general and sponsor of many, many initiatives to help printers is Sanmar. And I have my buddy Jason Murphy here from Sanmar. He's one of the decorator liaisons, uh, I don't know the exact title, that works with uh, decorators that use Sanmar products, decorators in general really, to help the industry figure out how to decorate all the wonderful garments out there. Hi, Jason. Good to see you, Rick, in person, which is even better. Yeah. So um, we're going to talk about sustainability a little. I mean, we'll talk a little bit about Samar's initiatives, but we're going to talk about it in general. And uh, well, what do you got to say about sustainability, Jason? Well, so if we go back 10, 12 years, right, into this industry where we kept hearing the word green, the word eco, eco-friendly, nobody really knew what it meant. Right, it, it was just something that we would say, well, I want an eco-friendly print. I want an eco-friendly this, I want an eco-friendly that. And we all said, okay, water-based. Yeah, I used to get uh, water-based ink. It was like, oh, you're gonna drink it? It could have hemlock in it, you know? Right? It's not necessarily sustainable. Yeah, so that was something that, you know, 10 years ago, it was kind of a thing. We would talk about it. We can do that for you. But it was so much more expensive. Usually what happened then is people were like, yeah, no, it's okay, we'll go pass this all. Right, so they really didn't understand what they were asking for. Now you fast forward to today and you look at Gen Z, okay? They care. They really care about where their product is made, what's in it, what it's doing to the environment. And it's something that we actually as, a, as, a, as an industry need to pay attention to. And, and especially in the printing side where, you know, there's a lot of apparel manufacturers that are doing their best to be sustainable, but that also, you know, it extends out to us as printers. You know, we've got to be more mindful in our shops of how we treat our people, how we uh, reclaim water, uh, what products we use. Um, are there phthalates? Are there plastics? All in, you know, so many different chemicals that are bad. So it, it's really a demand that you're going to see more and more from your customer base. They're going to be asking to see your sustainability, your CSRs. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I mean, I know there's a lot of printers that care about it, but I think there seems to be a change in the air, and I'm sure you see it, that people's customers want it, and they got to have answers, right? Yep. The, the customers are asking for it. And one great thing I love <clears throat> about this industry is your manufacturers in this industry care as well. Your ink companies are getting more friendly. Your uh, reclaim chemicals are getting more friendly. Your heat transfer uh, products are becoming more eco-friendly. Um, Apparel itself is getting more uh, sustainable, more circular. Uh, I mean, gosh, you, you look at the embroidery side, you've got so much waste there with backing pieces, with you know, uh, the, the plastic cones that the thread comes on. What do we do with all that? You know, when we're done, how do we recycle it? You know, if, if there's one thing I can ask everybody, that if you're a shop, I really want you to think, what is it that I do with my excess? What do I do with my plastic bags? What do I do with the cones if I'm an embroiderer? What do I do with the buckets that I have my ink in? Um, you know, do I recycle the paper in my shop? Did I get rid of that and did I go digital? There's so many ways that they can become a more sustainable shop uh, by doing little things inside. You want to hear a shocker actually for a sustainable effort? Look at the floor. Right. So people were saying what happened with the rug. They actually, the rugs normally, I don't know how much any of you know about trade shows, they usually roll them up and throw them out. And so acres of carpet gets thrown out. And so, um, the, one of the directors of this show is on the sustainability uh, and, um, committee, and this is an effort that they've made, which is to not throw all that carpet out. Good to so, know that, because yeah. I was wondering. I'm right? sitting going, why so, isn't there carpet? This yeah. is weird. Yeah, so, I mean, actually, the kind, it kind of points at a thing. You, you can't just do some of these things. You have to explain it. There has to be transparency. Um, a lot of words get thrown around, sometimes what I call greenwashing. Yep. So you got to, so what are some of the things your company actually, we'll use them as an example, uh, is doing to uh, have sustainable products and how are you educating your uh, buyers? So we, we've got an actual team of people that are all about sustainability and Emily Gigo, she's actually our head of sustainability. We have done everything from going back to our factories, right? So in Honduras where we do a lot of our manufacturing, 
we have a team down there that reduced the amount of water it took to dye one pound of fabric. And so does anybody know standard what it takes to dye one pound of fabric? How many gallons of water? No. 13. Okay. We reduced that to three. That was the first big change that we made. Um, on the sustainability side, in our factories, we've got the, the largest solar footprint in South America. So we're actually you know, reusing the, 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 the sun. But then also we burn king grass instead of oil and we collect biomass for gas. Wow. <laughs> so it's a lot of little things in, in manufacturing. But then we're also now one of the big things we're doing is we're using recycled cotton. So if, you, if you've seen how apparel is made, there's a lot of excess cotton. So what we did is we started separating yeah, that Explain cotton. that a little bit because not everybody's seen shirts okay. made, and you have. So why, why is there cotton? So when you're working and, and you're setting up an outline of a shirt and you cut away all the excess pieces before you sew it together, you're always going to have a little bit of excess around the outsides. And with that excess, what we did with our re line is we started reclaiming that into different colorways, right? And in those different colorways, um, we were able to take that, reduce it back down, spin it into a new yarn. So our re is 60% uh, recycled cotton and 40% post-consumer plastics. So Impressive. Very circular. And one of the other cool things that we did is my boss over there. Say hi. Mark Bailey. So um, his daughter was in the Peace Corps and was able to, I'm trying to think of how we did this. She was working in Africa, correct? And the, the ladies that were working around the town, there were times of the month they could not go to work because they had no feminine products. So called dad, said, can we get the leftover pieces and we can teach them how to make their own feminine products? So Mark goes to our um, operations officer and says, can we do this? And he said, yes, and we'll take that pattern and we'll put it in and cut it, tie them up and send them complete. So, Which I think is a good example that it takes a lot of creativity. It's not just easy, oh, we're gonna do X, Y, or Z, yep. that it's often more complicated um, and that a lot of small initiatives are gonna have to add up for a big results. Yep. So I don't, I don't think there's one thing to do for sustainability. I think that's maybe one of the biggest messages is that it has to be a part of everything that we do. Yes. And it, it's gonna take a lot of creativity and a lot of changes and even things we think are good one day, maybe later they're not. Maybe a certain kind of cotton we think is great, but it uses too much water and water is more of an issue, for example. Yep. I would say today with decorators, it, as you're getting into sustainability, look up what a CSR is, your corporate um, sustainability report, and then understand what you can do in your shop. You don't have to do everything because not many people can, right? But if you start tracking what you're doing as a sustainable company and you make it published where people can see it, you're not going to be considered a greenwasher, right? Because right. you're saying, here's what I do. This is how I do it. This is as sustainable as I become. And then you could just continue to grow and expand on that. I think a lot of people think that they have to be perfect, like some kind of saint. And, you know, you do what you can when you can. I always say perfection is the enemy of good. Yep. So if, if you're waiting to be perfect or if you're going to worry that somebody's going to criticize you because every uh, last thing you do. I mean, it's not like we're living in a cave naked. You know, we're making right. T-shirts. It's maybe not the greatest thing to do. But maybe we can make, like, make less of them right. and maybe we can... Um, make them in a sustain sustainable way. Yeah. I, I'd say the other cool thing that I've just recently learned is it, when you have uh, blem shirts, right, and they ask you to destroy them because they don't want them getting out into the marketplace, I met a company in Long Beach that's um, D to E and it's destruction to energy. And what they do is they gather uh, fabric and they burn it in these huge incinerators and they've got these filters that take all the particulates out, all the carcinogens. And they said with 2,000 pounds of fabric, they can power a home for a month. And there's more and more of these places popping up all over the United States. Right. Still not ideal, but better than throwing it in the yep. landfill. Yep. Um, I think maybe we'll go to some questions. How about that? Anybody have any questions about sustainability? Maybe terms you don't understand? Actually, yeah, I'm going to start with that one. So what does organic mean, right? That's just natural, <laughs> right? No. Or organic is such, and you actually probably know a lot more than I do about this, Organic is not just a clean piece of material. Organic is how it's actually planted, how it's maintained, how it's farmed, how it's actually uh, cultivated after, and then spun into a yarn and created. Um, having an organic piece is a lot of work. 
it's an enormous amount of work. And, it, and, and you cannot just say it's organic. No. So no. organic has to be no chemical fertilizers yep. or no pesticides for three years. Um, if you, you don't often hear about it, but there is transitional cotton. That's when someone's doing that three-year process, and those are good people to support usually. Yep. But in the end, organic does mean a very specific thing. It's not some bullshit. Yeah, it, it's actually a very difficult process to do, and, and the cost. The cost of organic cotton is tremendously more. It really is, and, but it's also a better for our environment. So we're, we're trying to do more and more with ourselves, and I think most manufacturers are trying to do more organic pieces, but they're, they're not easy to find. The organic cotton crops are not as big as people think. Well, the other interesting thing is it's a labor issue. Yes. So uh, my shop actually happens to be a union shop, so I have a lot of people come to me f for that reason. They care about how their things are made, and organic it's farm workers that get poisoned. So the chemical fertilizers and pesticides often poison the farm workers. So it's a labor issue as well as uh, uh, an ecological issue. Yeah, um, it, it's about how you take care of your people, really, and it, you have to protect them. And even in the screen print shops, you look at um, all the compliance that we had to go through 10 years ago. I worked in the heat transfer market back then, and they had to redesign every piece of, of vinyl to have no phthalates, no nickel, no heavy metals. That was a part of what they did. And, and so redesigning all that for transfer material, screen print inks, it was a tremendous undertaking by the whole industry. All right. Any questions about sustainability? Oh, so the question is, what is BCI cotton? I'm going to let you take that one because you know it way better than I do. So that is the Better Cotton Initiative, that's called. And so you're going to see that especially in the next year or so because there's not enough organic cotton. And some of the producers are having to use cotton from the BCI Initiative. BCI is basically some very strategic use of some fertilizers, chemical fertilizers, and pesticides, not wholesale destruction. And... Um, less water as well. So BCI cotton has certain standards. You can look them up. I'm not going to, I don't have them memorized, but it is a better cotton product for the environment. And you're going to see that more and more. Yeah. The other thing with cotton today, I think, you know, a lot of people are asking what's going on in the industry. Why, why can't we restock fast enough? There is a, a real life yarn shortage right now. And a lot of people don't realize how real this is. And one of the biggest things we're running into is 30% of the world's cotton crops are now boycotted, the Uyghur section of China. So 30% of that product we have to replace. Where are we going to get that from? It was all being used. So that's a It's big, being boycotted for a good reason. It though, is a very good out. reason. They were using uh, slave labor exactly. to harvest it and having uh, basically concentration camps of the Uyghur people in Western China. Yep. So it's for a good reason. but. We're all paying the price for it, and we should be, actually. Yeah, we are. It, but that's also, again, as far as being sustainable, is how you treat your people, how you treat it. the environment is not just it. Um, you know, it's like all of our factories that, you know, and I know a lot of manufacturers are like this. We subsidize housing. We subsidize food. When they go to the, to the cafe at lunch, they eat for basically a quarter, and, and they can have three meals a day. And on that, we build homes. We build uh, orphanages. Um, and like I said, it's not just Sanmar. It, it's a lot of the manufacturers. We really take um, important steps in the communities we're in. And that's another part of sustainability is your CSRs is the people. Um, questions about sustainability. Everybody know everything about it? Don't be bashful. Go ahead. I'll repeat the question if I can hear it. The question is, can the carrier sheets for transfer paper be recycled? Okay, so plastisol transfers, that's an easy answer, no, because it does have plastisol residue, so it's not going to be recyclable. Um, if it's a water-based transfer, then yes, um, that's going to be a recycled piece. And I know a lot of your heat transfer vinyl manufacturers are working on products to be more sustainable and have the carriers be recyclable, because that is a huge waste point in heat transfer vinyl is, is those actual carriers. But I can tell you, the big boys in this room, they're looking at it and they're addressing it. Uh, I will 
make a positive comment about that. Um, there's a company called Eco Enclosed. They're out of Colorado. I would look into them. They have stickers that come off of, uh, it's not transfers, but it's, this is a positive thing I might as well give them credit for. They have zero waste uh, mailing labels. They have zero waste stickers. So um, that's pretty important. I don't know if any of you have a big shop, but we have a big shop where we might mail out 20,000 packages. That is a lot of waste. <laughs> And now those can be recycled. So can you check send me that, that too? It's can you e send me that? Yeah, okay. Eco Enclose is the company. They also make compostable and um, recycled mailers. The mailers that we use, we're going to be talking about tomorrow. When, when's your talk? Four o'clock tomorrow. We're going to be talking about um, shops, like company stores, so forth, online stores. Um, we use mailers now that, one, they can be reused. They have two adhesives. They're also uh, made out of recycled material. The great thing about Eco Enclosed, they know perfection is the enemy of good, and they just lay out the options. So, for example, uh, and this, this kind of digs into actually how hard it is to know what's sustainable. So they have um, paper mailers that are compostable, but most people don't compost. So. And then they're heavier, so it uses more, it's a higher carbon footprint. Whereas the plastic bags they have are made from, I think, 100% post-consumer waste. Yep. So it's a, it gets very complicated, and you have to dig in, and you have to educate yourself, and, and you also have to educate your customers. And like I said, you got to do something. It's better than a stupid, you know, virgin plastic mailer, no matter right. what. So, I mean, you start getting into question of what, how's the adhesive made and you know a lot of different questions but definitely check them out and they do have zero waste uh, mailing labels they fit in your UPS thing and everything yeah. I'd say if anybody wants to know how important it is for the sustainability initiatives today listen to your kids if you have kids or grandkids because you're gonna hear about it from them I learned about it from all three of my girls because they're very much into sustainability and what we do and interested in what my company does as well as others. And they're to the point now where this blew me away. They will not buy new clothes. They go thrift because they're recycling, right? So for me, I was just like, wow, I mean, here's three young girls, teenagers, you know, and above, and they're going to go thrift instead of going to the store and buy something new. So listen to the kids, listen to the Gen Z because they are going to be your next customers. And it is very important to them. And if you ever do um, you know, get-togethers where you talk to your customers, invite them and ask them these questions. How important is this to you? And ask them, what does it mean? Because it means something different to each person. And if you're working with a, a specific customer and you understand what it means to them, it just helps you grow your sustainability initiatives. And if you do that with multiple people, next thing you know, you're actually running a very sustainable company. And it, became, and it came naturally. Well, that's interesting you say that. So I've been uh, talking to someone that um, it was one of the people that put on the original uh, Tibet Freedom concerts with all major bands. They're working on a climate, con uh, climate issue concert, and they're talking about buying all remainders. Like they would buy just odd lots and that all the merchandise would not be on, like maybe the mediums are going to be on black and the largest on brown, that it, they feel it's better to use stuff that would otherwise go to waste. And that's actually going to be the approach. And then on a smaller level, we have a company that's going to do a few, uh, an event that's going to do a few hundred shirts and they're going to do something similar. I mean, it's actually going to save us money because they're things we had laying around and they feel that's better than buying virgin product at all. So people are coming up with like new ideas yeah. and some of this is pretty important i mean um i think i read h&m was how many tons yeah. millions of tons of ridiculous. their clothing is being incinerated just in the fast fashion process yeah and that's it's not the same like i was talking to people in long beach that are doing the destruction to energy this isn't the same they're belching smoke out and just just incinerating just normal right they don't have any other safeguards in place you know one of the other initiatives that's always i always like hearing from you um i don't know if you want to talk about it, is what you do with farm aid because like, you do an incredible program with them to raise money so actually and it shows it can work that people do care about this so we've been doing the merchandise program for farm aid and they uh support family farmers they support or, uh, organic cotton growing in the united states in particular and you know, people respond to that. They, they've had, like, uh, concerts we've done 
where we're selling, I think $18 a head we hit, and $6 a head is a good result. And we had $18 a head at the last concert. And I think people really, it, it resonates with them that they know where the things come from. They're very transparent about the uh, components of the products. Some things aren't perfect, but it's the best you can do. You know, maybe it would be great if it was a USA made denim jacket that was organic, but maybe the only organic jackets made in Vietnam. Who right. knows? So <laughs> it's like, you know, you, again, perfection is the enemy of good, but if you're making an effort, people are responsive. Yeah. And I'd say to learn more about the people you work with as well, don't be afraid to ask a manufacturer or supplier for their CSRs because the good ones have them. You know, they'll be able to provide it, let you know what they're doing to make you know, the environment better and, and just affecting the industry. And reading theirs will actually help you understand what you could do in your business as well. Um, that beautiful lady there has a question. It's my wife. <laughs> Oh, uh, so the question is basically, when you're talking about recycled and recyclable, maybe what's the difference there? Okay, so a, a shirt that is actually made of recycled product is made from either post-consumer plastics or they're made from um, recycled cottons. So it's generally cotton and poly that are going to be most recyclable because when you get into nylons, it's really not a lot recyclable there. You get into spandex and lyocells and it's just, there's really nothing sustainable or, or even recyclable about it and then as far as is what is made which products are made it's a leading oh. question <laughs> and i think i know where it's going so you know actually this also gets back to when we're talking about the fact that these things change so right now i would say it's a very positive thing to use recycled materials yeah. including recycled plastic in the coming years, we'll find that blends are not a good idea. That is harder to recycle a 50-50 shirt that's half recycled plastic yep. and half organic cotton because you can't separate those. Right. So it may be made of recycled materials, but it's not recyclable. Right. But you know what? Most shirts are not recycled now anyway, but that is on the horizon that's gonna happen. So th that is something to be aware of. Um, although by the time we get there, um, I know there's initiatives to separate fabrics w using various um, biological processes yep. where the um, polyesters and the organics, uh, and the polyesters and the cottons would be separated uh, in the recycling process. Basically with an enzyme. It's getting pretty deep there. Yeah, it's, it's basically an enzyme. And the way that they do it is the enzyme is designed to actually attack the polyester and separate it away from the cotton so you have a good recyclable cotton to use. Um, any other questions about sustainability? Just a general, you know, nod your heads or raise your hand. Are your customers asking for more products like that in terms of the garments and the processes that you use? Do, do they care how you print them? You getting those questions too? No. Like what kind of inks and so forth or not? Mostly the mostly the garment, right? Yeah. Um, and I think. You are seeing a wide range of projects. I, I know they sell all made products which have recycled uh, polyester and then either BCI or organic cotton. And now you've expanded that to sweatshirts, right? Yep. And uh, some other products, not yep. just t-shirts, right? Yeah, we're pretty much tees, fleece, more, more to come, but tees and fleece right now. Is there any alternative to uh, plastic bags when people want things bagged? The, al the biggest alternative we found is stop using them. I mean, we, we've stopped using so much plastic in our, our uh, shipping to where we used to individually bag. Now we bag in sixes. So we're taking, you know, five, five bags out of that for a shipment, um, trying to use less pins and parts and pieces, less paper. Uh, but there are times where you have to have it. You know, when you're stacking button shirts together and you don't have something between it, it's going to scratch the back because the button is abrasive. So we're trying to figure out ways around that, rubberized buttons, things like that. But yeah, it's a big thing is getting rid of the usage, honestly. We actually have a kind of an interesting approach to some of it. So we reuse our boxes and, you know, I know some people print their own new ones, but instead we put a, a sticker on that says why we're reusing that box. So it's not just a reused box. People know that it's intentional. Yep. Um, 
needs a lot of explanation. All this needs a lot of explanation. I think that's one thing that people, if you order from Sanmar, you'll see is our boxes come in with our brand, but it doesn't come in with Sanmar, right? That's, that's not on the box. It actually is Port and Company, Port Authority, District, and that's so the, bi- the boxes can be reused, oh, you know, because it, the, you don't want people to know where you're getting it from. You just want them to know they're getting a cool brand. And that's why we send boxes out like that that are branded with what you bought. I've actually been doing a sustainable approach, which is in customer service. So more, I don't know any of you that are screen printers. Are you screen printers, embroiderers, screen printers? So how much ink do you waste when you don't match a Pantone perfectly? (laughs) A lot. So more and more I am imposing on people that they're going to get something close, not the exact Pantone. Pantone is the devil, as far as I'm concerned, uh, in terms of uh, ink wastage, yes. for sure. I mean, if you're using like a discharge ink, for example, I, I'm saying you're going to get about a half Pantone range. And if you go into it, people accept that more than if they were expecting a perfect thing and they got the book out. You know, it's like there's the formula. That's what it looks like in the bucket. That's what it looks like through a certain mesh. There's what it looks like on the garment. There's what it looks like at the end of the dryer. <laughs> and there's what it looks like when it cools down. Sometimes even what it looks like the next day. Yep. So if you're trying to match a color like that, you're going to fail quite often. And if you fail, that's going in the dumper. And that is not sustainable. Right. So you get people saying, you know, I don't want plastic ink. I want water-based ink. And then they impose Pantone on you like that. It's like, sorry, but fuck you. You don't really care. You care about the the optics of it. You don't care about actually what is going to happen. And so at least lay it out there for them like that. Yeah. And, you know, fun one talking about water-based. So a lot of people, they think water-based is the only sustainable ink that exists, right? Or or, um, uh, the high solid acrylics, right? But if you do the math and you look at Plastisol versus water-based, you look at water consumption, power consumption, and all that together, Plastisol is not so bad. It's and very it can be reused. It can be reused is yes. probably the biggest thing, and it doesn't go bad very quickly. It takes 25 years usually to go bad if it's stored properly. <laughs> As a, We did a job for Aveda once that they insisted on this ink, and we ended up throwing out 22 gallons. That is a lot of ink. That is a big pile of ink because it went bad later. They, they, see, they had a rule that if we didn't get all the shirts printed, like we were going to get this huge penalty. So we had to have plenty of it. It was special ink. We couldn't get it locally. So we had to have more than enough. Then we didn't end up using it for anything else. So what was perhaps well-intentioned, although I would say it was more about optics, turned into a disaster ecologically where these big tubs of ink were thrown out. Um, all right. Other questions? Well, Jason's around. He's going to be here a few minutes. He, his booth is the Sanmar one over there. He's a delightful person to talk to. And I suggest that if you have other questions, if you're shy or just to think of them later, that you find him and ask the questions. I'll be around for three days here. And as you can already tell, I'm glad to spout off about it, yeah. any of this and but all I, of it. I always like to close. And actually, I usually like to open with this. So if you don't follow the ink kitchen, you really should. If you go back 10, 12 years ago, this industry didn't talk to each other. You know, it's like, no, these are mine. Those are mine. This is my company. I don't want you in my shop. These guys are responsible for everybody talking, getting online, making a community where they actually help each other. You know, so for me, that's big. And thank you. All right. Thanks, Jason Murphy. Uh, Thanks again to Haynes and her solutions who are sponsored this and impressions. And thank you for attending. See uh, this schedule behind that board if you want to come to some more things.